and welcome to Candy's Quarantine Conversations with me, Candy Delore. Joining me today is my special guest all the way from the beautiful, wonderful country, Nigeria. And her name is Penel Glory. She is a poet and a writer. Hi, Penel. Hi, Candy. Thanks for having me. No, thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast today. I really appreciate it. I've been so excited to speak with you because I have so many questions for you. <laughs> so, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, how, too. How have you been during this time of quarantine? Um, I've been well um, around here. Uh, my family, we've been very okay but you know it's been exhausting don't go out don't travel Mm -hmm. um school has been put on hold and all that so it's been so exhausting but thank god yeah i'm sure that you have probably managed to write many poems during this time of lockdown I've, i've been reading some of them on instagram and i'm sure that you've been you know, keeping people's spirits uplifted with your lovely words and your beautiful writing during this time of difficulty? Um, I guess so, because I I think that this um, lockdown actually brought out my creative juices. You know, most times I'm not, I'm always very busy with school and business, but because I've been at home, you know, I get to like, I get to retreat and I get to write something meaningful. Yes. And I, this lockdown has really been a blessing because I met you during this lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say that you are a blessing to many people, myself included. Do you know how I actually found you? It's really strange because I know that one day you probably just saw me start following you and liking all your stuff. <laughs> And that was because um, I was feeling a type of way that day. I was just feeling very caged in by a couple of people. And it's like they couldn't understand my visions and they wanted me to kind of mould myself to fit, you know, who they thought I was. So I just felt like reading something that, you know, could relate to my feelings. And I just started typing in things like, don't box me in or people are trying to box me in you know (laughs) and then your poem came up um I'm gonna read it um don't try to cage me in a box of steel don't you know I have a heart that feels don't try to control my stride don't you know I'm on a spiritual ride don't try to drown me in your mess don't you know you can't curse what God has blessed don't try to hinder the joys that overflows Don't you know I'm a tree that needs to grow? Don't whisper accusations in the wind. Don't you know I stop where he begins? Don't try to strangle the treasure before it's discovered. Don't you know everything in the dark will be uncovered? Don't even bother. And I must say, when I read that, I just, I felt every single word. I really did, because that's how I was feeling at the time. I felt like people were trying to, you know, box me, and I felt like they didn't understand. My heart has feelings, you know, they're trying to control my my strides, you know, where I go, what I want to do, try to drown me in all their drama, you know, what you put as mess. And I thought, yeah, you can't curse me, because I'm God blessed you. I could just feel it's your so- poem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I thought, I need to find the writer of this poem so I put your name down in our social media links and you came up and yeah the rest is history it's been a few months now since I've been following you and I must say that your poems are so lovely they really are so beautiful and you write you know poetry about many different situations and lots of people especially women can relate to them um, yeah, and I'm just so happy that I actually found you, to be honest. So can I ask you, what made you write that poem, um, Don't Even Bother? Okay, what made me write? I wrote that poem sometime in 2016. That was when I wrote that poem. I was about to go into college and the 
the what my family expected me to study wasn't what I got. I wanted to do, I wanted to major in art. I wanted to major in literature, but they wanted me to do sciences. They wanted me to be a medical doctor. <laughs> and um, nobody wanted to read my stuff, you get. I, I felt so caged in. I felt like I wasn't really unleashing my potential. Nobody wanted to listen to my music. Nobody wanted to read my poems. Even when I bring it out for my family to see, cause I I, I I don't really I I live I lived in my family a lot. Like I think it's this year this year that I moved out. You get mm -hmm. so I've been leaving my family all this time. So they are the only validation that I've always had, you know. And um, I nobody showed interest. Nobody showed interest. They were like, you must do this. They want to direct your life and all that. So I felt so caged in. I felt like, uh, 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 I felt, I felt, I, yeah, that's the right word to use. I felt so caged in. So I was telling them, don't even bother. God has a purpose in my life. And don't try to cage me. <laughs> that, it's been a long time I wrote that poem. And I'm out of that place of depression and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that is most definitely a powerful poem. And um, I think that so many people can relate to uh, having the pressures and stresses of your family wanting you to become, you know, um, what they want you to be, whether it's a doctor, a lawyer. I know that they always mean best, you know, when they do these things, they want what's best for us. But um, as individuals, sometimes it can be extremely difficult to express and get your point across that no this is what i want you know <laughs> exactly 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 like my family they are too they are too indoctrinated and too religious you know so they just want i will be like i want to be the mother of a doctor i want to be the mother of a lawyer like they are older i'm talented you know and you're not seeing it and if i try to <laughs> if i try to show them they hush me you get so yes <laughs> 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 so um do you come from like a literary background does anybody else in your family write or um you know write articles or st uh, stories or poems or is this just something that you created yourself from your own passions you know my my i did create it when i was little sorry a little story when i was little i always i always had a diary you get so i had a diary where I, I i didn't know how to express myself then and i was always shy to speak so whenever anything happens to me in school whenever i have a crush on guys whenever i get bullied because <laughs> i was bullied a lot oh, no. <laughs> I was really, yeah i was really bullied a lot so i had nobody to talk to so i just get a book and i write everything down so i think from there the words started coming. Then I read a lot of novels. And one time, my mom now told me that she used to write when she was younger, that she used to write poems, but her poems were always sad. So she stopped writing it. <laughs> I was like, why? She said um, she got busy. Then, <laughs> yeah. Oh, then my dad, my dad is a historian. My dad is a historian. Wow. Yes, wow, thank you. Yes, so you must definitely know your history. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know that much. <laughs> so how did you actually get started as a poet? Like, what was um, the first poem that you wrote and just what made you write it? Okay. I first wrote my, the first, it wasn't really a poem. It was a spoken word because I, I joined this church in school. I joined this church in school and they were really, you know, they were really, they really harnessed the gift out of me. The teachings and everything made me become more bold and more courageous. So yeah. I joined the literary society and then I... <sighs> I started, I started writing uh, spoken words. Then sometimes I present them in churches, in my church mostly. I present them in my church. But I think I started writing uh, poems 20, 2017. That was on Facebook. Wow. Because 
Yes, I start writing them on Facebook. Mostly, it's always a long list. But <laughs> it's time, yes, I start reading other people's work and, you know, I found a way to like shorten my words and still pass a message. That is amazing. That's brilliant. So do you have um, books with your poems in for sale or um, have you, you know, become an author of your poems yet and put them together in a poetry book? No, I've not done that yet. Okay, I've you not done definitely that should. What are you waiting for? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was it was on my mind yesterday. I was like, I was thinking of the I was thinking of the name I was going to call the book. You know, it was on my mind yesterday and you've given me clarity. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I definitely think you should write a book and you should probably name it after your surname. Just put glory as the title because your poems are glorious, you know, they're full of glory. They help people, you know, they motivate people. You should do that. <laughs> You've yeah. got people all over the world reading your poems and you probably don't even know it. <laughs> I don't know, honestly. I don't know. It's so overwhelming. Like the love I started receiving, uh, the love I started receiving recently, I think this year, because last year, last year, I did not post any poetry. I think I did just two. I just wrote them and I kept them somewhere. But this year, you know, I found my voice and then I started writing even more and I was posting. And the love I get from people is just so, <clears throat> it feels so surreal, you know. And somehow someone told me that um, poetry is not, it's not something that will, how do I put it? It's not, it's not something that will give me a voice in my country. Those are someone told me that it's either I do something else, it's either I do business, it's either I learn a skill or something. I was like, yes, I have skills, but this is my passion and this is what I really want to do. He told me, like, he wished me luck. He gave, but now I know that I can really make something out of out of it yes yes of yeah. course once you you know follow your passions I mean you said you first started writing in 2016 that was your first poem it's 2020 now you know and I'm very sure look at me I'm all the way in the UK and I searched for you you know and that was after reading one poem I can't be the only person who actually felt such an energy that they needed to go and search for you sometimes people who don't understand your vision you know, they don't understand what you write because they can't relate to it due to not having the experiences themselves. They tend to rubbish your passions or rubbish your work, but there will always be those types of people. And maybe they're not doing it intentionally when they wish you the best of luck. Maybe they really do, but they just can't see your project kicking off the ground. You can have so many of these naysayers and doubters. They're everywhere. Yeah. But then you do have the other side, you know, your supporters, and those are people who you won't know. You actually won't know them. It's always the people you know, unfortunately, who tend to underestimate you. But the people who you don't know, those are the people who tend end up supporting you the most. And um, there will always be a crowd of people who love what you do. You just got to find them. You just got to find your audience. But they are out there. I'm part of that audience. You know, I support what you do. I think your poems are brilliant. I think they're amazing. Um, and I definitely think you should keep going. I think that your poetry book is long overdue. You have got to get that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I'll, be, I'll begin writing something on it. I'll begin doing yeah. something on it. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yes, because... I mean, poetry is still very much read, even though we're in 2020, because it's a way of expressing our feelings. Sometimes you don't want to open a big textbook, <clears throat> excuse me, that has lots of research. They'll go into your feelings and stuff, but then it's always backed up by research. Uh, the reason we think this is because in a 2010 study, nine out of 10 people were found to be depressed because of this and that. It always has to have, you know, back, backed up explanation. Yeah, yeah. But with poetry, you're just putting your feelings out there that people can read and relate to. And they don't have to go through all the statistical facts. They don't have to go through all of the, you know, big words and 
it sometimes just takes you out of your feelings and makes you focus on something else instead. But poetry, especially when it's beautifully written, like how you write your poems, it's something that you can just really get into your feelings. And at the end of it, you come out of your feelings because you feel like somebody has understood you. You feel like the writer has understood you and you go away feeling a lot better. And it's, that's why it's so motivational because it motivates people to get out of a bad mood or out of their feelings and feel better because they know they're not alone. And once you write poems like that where people feel like, I'm not alone. The writer, she's felt like this because she's written this. <laughs> it's, you know, it gets you up to, it gets you to a better place than where you were before you read the poem because you feel understood. So um, I say, don't ever listen to anybody who tries to tell you your poems aren't going to get you heard because you are being heard. You've been heard all the way here in the UK. <laughs> honestly, honestly, honestly. I, I was like, wow. <laughs> Not only that, like a lot of a lot of people have connected with a lot of poets too that's connected. They want us to work together. Like we should have a debut uh, album of poems and all that. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yes. You should yeah. definitely do that and get involved in it. Seriously, yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. Yes. But before you do that, definitely focus on your own because you've got so many beautiful poems there. And um, I know that, you know, if you wrote a book, you'd be able to help so many people feel better because I think that's what poetry does. It just makes you feel yeah. so much yeah. better. It's better than reading an article. Yeah. It's better than, you know, even if you did like an um, audio you know people can listen to poetry that helps as well so yeah poetry is not dead it's very much alive like, <laughs> and, <I'm... laughs> yes and the writers of the poems are funny. yes and the writers of the poems they're being heard you are being heard you are being heard so please don't ever let what anybody says to you about not being heard don't let that affect you because they're wrong <laughs> so um what's life like in Nigeria I've always wanted to travel to Nigeria honestly and it's funny you say that your father is a historian because um I recently started looking into my ancestry through ancestry DNA and um you know the majority of it turns out for, uh, for me is that I'm Nigerian so, you know, and I've never visited Nigeria. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that is where my ancestors... That's amazing. <laughs> yes, that's where my ancestors came from, Nigeria. So to be honest, I'm fascinated by the country and I'd love to find out so much more about Nigeria. So what's your life like out there? Um, Nigeria is a very beautiful place, you know. Um, we are rich in culture and we have a lot of languages and you already know, like we are the biggest country in Africa. So um, a lot of things go on here, both good and the bad, which you know, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it happens everywhere. <clears throat> you know, I, I've only lived in this part of, yeah, I've only lived in this part of uh, I've not really explored other tribes and other languages and all that but we are doing okay and although the system of government doesn't really help the youths you get but I believe that we are growing to somewhere yeah it sounds really nice and I've watched loads of um, videos on YouTube of you know tourists showing the country and you know showing how beautiful certain parts of Nigeria is and also showing um the struggles that people experience out there as well so I do understand when you say there is good and there is bad everywhere has that to be honest yeah it's good and bad in London as well do you have any um favorite poets of your own people who you love to read and stuff like that um I love to read Maya Angelou Oh, yes. She's like, yeah, she's an icon and her poetry is so brilliant. Yeah. And I love to read um, 
I love to read Omari, Omari Haduk or Chadwick. I don't really know what his surname is, but... <laughs> okay, okay, I've never heard of him. Yeah, I met, him, I met him on Instagram, and he's a big poet. I love to read um, Ezekiel Azomo. There's, he's a spoken word artist, and um, like they just inspire me to do more than just writing poems. You get? Yes. I love to listen to Clayton Jennings. Do you know him? No. Okay. <laughs> they are spoken word artists too. And they write good and they write and they write very well too. So they really inspire me. They really inspire me. I've definitely heard of Maya Angelou. She is absolutely amazing. She is an icon. And I will have to do my homework on the uh, poets that you mentioned as All well. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so apart from poetry, do you enjoy reading books? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Have I'm, you... a nerd. I'm a nerd. I read a lot. I read a lot. I read a lot. And mostly novels, poetry articles, and all that. I read a lot. Brilliant. Have you read anything interesting? And I love to read all these um self-help books financial yeah. books improvement books and all that self-improvement yeah. books yeah oh, that's brilliant have you read any good books yeah. during the lockdown at all okay i've i've read um i read the alchemist again okay okay is that good i haven't read that before i've heard of it though is that any good yeah well for you the to alchemist. read it twice it must be <laughs> Yeah, it's one of the best books I've ever read. You know, I read it again. And I read um, The Secret. I read The Secret. Yes. And I'm writing I'm writing a story on Wattpad. And okay. I'm still, yeah. Brilliant. Yes, I do go to Wattpad. And you can find some really interesting stories on there, actually. So that would be excellent. That is brilliant. So, um... So you write stories as well? Yes, I do write stories. I write movie scripts. I write movie scripts. And I work with this. Um, they, I, I'm a content creator too for an agency. So, but we do it online. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you. So Thank what you. do you enjoy writing most? Poetry or stories or um, things to do with like content creating? Um, I enjoy writing poetry the most because I love playing with words. I love rhyming. Yeah. And at the time, I wanted to start writing raps. I was, I was doing, yes, I was writing it so well, but, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to re rap them. <laughs> <laughs> I get to play with words and, yeah, and I get to, I get to uh, play with metaphors too. Yeah. So I just really prefer writing poetry. Okay, okay. Um, I can relate to that. I love poetry. I love making words rhyme as well. And I know for many poets, it's so effortless. It just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, so I can understand when you say that you wanted to write raps because at one point I wanted to do the same thing. I thought, you know what? I should just write a rap song. I'm always rhyming, you know? <laughs> I should become a songwriter. <laughs> But it's, you know, it does go hand in hand, writing poetry and writing uh, music, yes, you know, do. songwriting. It really does because it's about feelings and yeah. there is a certain rhythm to poetry and that's the making it rhyme part. So it's definitely related. So if it's something that you, yeah, still wish to do, then why not try it? I write music. I write. I like I write um what's it called? I write lyrics a lot. I write gospel songs. I write all this um a lot contemporary music you get. But the rap part I decided to let it be. Have you ever experienced having writer's block, you know, where you just can't focus and you just can't write? Yeah. It happens to me a lot, but like I said, during this lockdown, my creative juices have been flowing a lot. It happens to me a lot. Last year was the worst. I don't think I ever wrote anything throughout last year, apart from the, I think, 
early months of 2019. But when I was writing, because last year I graduated from college and I had a lot of work to do. So the pressure was just too much. I didn't really have time to like write anything or think or create anything. You know, even if I tried, I wasn't flowing. So I just let it be. Yeah, I experienced write blog, writer's blog too. Yes, and I definitely understand just letting it be because sometimes that's all you can do is take your focus off it and distract yourself with other things and just hopefully, you know, while the feeling does naturally come back in its yeah. own time. So, yeah, I think yeah. that's a really good way. And I became, I became better. I became better. I became better, yeah. No, that's good and that's definitely understandable. So um, do you have like a preferred time of the day that you write your poems? Do you write them in the mornings, the afternoons or the nights or can it just float any time? Um, midnight. Okay. I'm usually awake most of the time in the night you get. So when I'm awake, I, I write a lot. No, I can, I can, I may, I may not write for a whole week I can write more than 10 meaningful things in a night. So I I I work well in the night than during the day. Yeah. yeah. A lot of creative people tell me that that they tend to work better at night time. And uh yeah, I can definitely understand that too because I'm a bit of a night owl myself. So yeah, I can understand. Yeah. That. yeah. Poetry is really beautiful to write in the night time, I think as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I just come out to the open, look at the sky and think, and then I just start writing and I'm like, oh my God, did I really write it? You get, so sometimes when I'm feeling down, I just go back to my poems. I just go back to all those books that I used to have at, um, during the years, like all the books I have. You know, I go back to them and I read them and I feel inspired again. I'm like, oh, you're, you, <laughs> you, you are good. You know, I get to, val they give me validation, you get. So yes. I go back to them and I feel empowered again. Yes. yes. That's absolutely beautiful. That is so lovely. And to be honest, even the vibe I feel of you, you know, I feel, <laughs> even though we're so far away, I do feel <laughs> like you've just got such a beautiful vibe to you. You know, you just mm -hmm. seem so calm and relaxed and, you know, it's really lovely yeah. when you can see people who write poetry be in that state of, you know, just be themselves and appear so relaxed. And you just seem like a really beautiful person inside and out. You honestly Thank do. you. <laughs> Thank you, Atu. Thank you. No, you're welcome. You are welcome. So um, have you ever had to handle any criticism for the things that you write by anyone or being judged or... Have you had a pretty positive experience of writing your feelings? It hasn't really been positive. Um, most people that read my work, especially people who are close to me, like I get the criticism from like the people who are really close, close to me, the people I should, like the people that should really push me. So when they tell me your poems are too sad or yeah, your poems are too like they are too shallow something like that like they are too sad you always write about heartbreaks and all that and it's as though it's as though yeah a, a something bad is always happening to you i'm like but that's not why i wrote it <laughs> you know at that point i don't even know how to explain myself again so i stopped i stopped at a point i stopped posting my poems on my on my whatsapp okay yes i just i focus mainly on my Instagram because mm -hmm. a lot of people relate to it through the yeah. platform yeah. than through WhatsApp because WhatsApp is mainly uh, your family and friends and people mm -hmm. that you a close circle. So I just stopped posting them on WhatsApp. Well, you should definitely post them on Facebook. And um, I think that when it comes to writing poetry, let's be honest, a lot of people who read poetry they tend to be going through something, you know? They might be going through depression, they might be feeling angry, they might be feeling sad, they might be feeling lonely. I think that loneliness is the number one cause 
that pushes people to read poetry. When people are happy, they very rarely tend to read poems. They're so busy, you know, they want to keep their happy vibe. Yeah, yeah. They're on the phone to their friends, they're doing something. But I don't see a happy person sitting down and saying, right, I'm going to read a poem. You know, poetry... <laughs> you know, because it, poetry is mostly read by thinkers as well, people who tend to overthink a lot. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, so I'm not saying that all poetry needs to be sad and stuff, but I think that it helps when people, poetry is about feeling. And um, yeah. a lot of the time it's about things that people have gone through. It's about, True. you know, inspiring people, motivating people, helping them to feel better. So poems might start off seeming a bit sad, but they, at the end, I think that what they should aspire to do is give the reader strength make them feel happy which is what your poems do and when they feel happy they can go off you know because the poem has made them feel better it's made them feel happy and then they can you know they they're feeling better than how they did before they they read it as i said before so uh, i don't think that it's um a bad thing to write poetry that have real meaning and real feelings behind it <laughs> Yeah, poems are very, very valid and very helpful too. You know, I'd never read anything that came so close to how I was feeling that day. You know, when I read the Don't Cage Me In poem that you wrote, I, you know, I was just looking for something just to try and express myself because at the time I thought, all right, I'm not going to do it vocally because it might come out wrong. I'm just going to hold it in and just try and read something that will calm me down a bit. Initially, I was looking for an article but I came across your poem instead and it was much better than any article that I could have read to, you know, give me comfort at that time and calm me down. <laughs> yeah, um, I think one of the reasons I, one of the reasons I stopped posting my poems on, there was this friend that I had, so he doesn't, like, when I post the poems, he doesn't like, he doesn't say anything to me, but I just find it on his own status he will remove my name like he will crop it off and then post it as one of his write-ups i'm like why are you doing that he said i'm just starting that i should not i should not be too hard that nobody knows me yet that kind of stuff. i was like so because nobody knows my poetry yet you now want to crop off my name and then post it as though it's yours so i told him to stop i had to block him so i stopped um I stopped posting them more on the platform where I, ha I have a lot of people that know me. So that was, I think that's one of the reasons why, because I'm I'm scared of I'm scared of that. I'm scared of somebody taking my work as though it's theirs. Yeah. Right. So what you need to do to prevent that from happening is when you post your poem, put your name, even if you've got to like fade it, put it over a yeah. sentence or something. Yeah. And uh, secondly, you definitely should copyright all your stuff and thirdly I mean you need to get your book done you need to do your book because that will stop that from happening but I'll be honest with you you know certain memes that I make people will do the same thing to me but I just think you know they remove my name from it and try to post it off as something that they've written I think it happens to everyone to be honest I'm going to be honest with you and share a true uh, real life situation so one day I was on a celebrity's page. I won't mention the celebrity. And um, they wrote something on Instagram and tried to pass it off as their own. And I thought to myself, I've read this somewhere before. This doesn't sound right. I've read it. This person has copied it. So I, I went on to Google, did a bit of research, and I found the article that that celebrity, and I'm talking about A-class Hollywood celebrity, stole literally copied and pasted into their instagram and since you know what i did i messaged that celebrity on instagram what i did yeah. first was send a screenshot of his um you know of the celebrity's uh post and then i put the original writer's post next to it then i sent the message and i said look i've just seen this and you know reading off your instagram instantly i knew i had seen it somewhere before and so I called him out on it and he said to me, I, I do that all the time. And I said, well, that's someone's work. I said, that's a yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I was shocked when I got a reply from him because 
<laughs> I thought, I, you know, I was so shocked that I got a reply from this celebrity, honestly. And he said to me, I do this all the time. <laughs> and I said, that's not good enough. You shouldn't do this no, because no. if someone did that to me, I'd be so upset, okay. you know. And um, this celebrity, you know, I haven't said anything. I wouldn't out them or anything like that. But, you know, I did what I thought was best at the time, which was to call him out on it. And I didn't see him do it again after that. <laughs> but oh. it happens. It happens. And even some of the most talented people, people or should yeah. I say even the most talented people, you know, <laughs> they need help sometimes. And instead of, you know, trying to help themselves, they take it upon themselves to take other people's work to try to help themselves, which is absolutely disgusting. So don't worry, it happens to the best of us. And um, you've just got to try to protect your work a bit more now. And don't be afraid to call people out. Don't be afraid because I've seen, you know, people take my memes, take my name off it and share it. And I always leave a comment. Thanks for sharing. Originally written by Candy Delore. Don't be afraid to go in the comments and say, I wrote that, because that's your work, that's your baby, that's your masterpiece, it's come from your brain, you know, yeah. and it will also make people who are doing that think twice about doing it again, you know, when you shame them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's awful. It's one thing to have a post, uh, but, you know, that someone's written, but to take their name off it, and trying to pass it off as your own work is absolutely disgusting. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it really is. You know, you are a very talented woman. You have a way of making your readers feel very special and very cared for. And I think, you know, and you make them feel like they're not alone. And I think that every poet needs to have that touch. You know, they need to, it's a magical touch because you touch people hair. And that's yeah, what poetry is supposed to do. So I just want to tell you to please keep going. Don't stop. I want to see you, you publish that poetry book <laughs> because I'm sure you've written enough poems to form a book. Honestly, <laughs> I have, I'm not, like if I start putting out half of what I've written, it's just too much. I really, really appreciate you being a guest on Candy's Quarantine Conversations today. It's been absolutely amazing speaking with you. And yes, yeah, thank you so much. Can you tell the viewers and listeners how they can follow you on social media, please? Okay. Um, my name is Peniel Glory. So uh, you follow me on Instagram, Peniel Glory underscore. And yeah. When you follow me, you get to read my poems and I promise to put out more content that are meaningful. Please do. All your poems are meaningful as well. And get your Facebook page started because I think that would be an excellent platform for you too. Yeah, yeah. My Facebook name is um, Peniel Glory John Benedict. Brilliant. Peniel Glory John Benedict, yeah. Brilliant. That's my Facebook name, yeah. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me today, Penel. Thank and, you. Um, you're welcome. Take care. Take care too. Bye. Bye. Bye.